All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I'm going to show you the only five varieties of tomato that you'll need to grow this year to cover every use for your tomato harvest in the summer. Plus, I've got two extra varieties that I'm going to be trying out this year, which, if they grow well, they might just replace my tried and tested traditional varieties in the future. And if it's tomato growing that you're interested in, I've got loads of interesting projects and experiments on the way this year. I've got hanging baskets, hydroponics, vertical farm tomatoes and my tomato experiment for 2023 all coming up in the next couple of weeks and months. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and activate your channel notifications to keep up to date with all of those videos and check out all of my other tomato and gardening videos to get the most out of your garden and your harvest this year, no matter how big or small your growing space is. Well, we're at the start of the tomato growing season and that means that if you haven't already, it's time to choose the varieties of tomato that you want to grow this year. I don't know about you, but every year I end up looking at all of the different varieties that are available and I just end up with loads and loads of plants and I end up having too many uh, and then I have nowhere to plant them. So uh, I'm looking through YouTube and uh, I see videos recommending like 20, 30, 50, even 60 varieties of tomatoes to grow this year, which is not very good for beginners or really anyone who doesn't have a massive piece of land to grow like 60 varieties of tomatoes on. So this year, I've chosen just five varieties that will cover every single base for every type of tomato, for every recipe that you could need tomatoes for. I've also only planted a single row in my greenhouse this year because I always put too many in and then they grow so well that they just become unmanageable and the ones on the back row become impossible to look after properly. So I've also gone with two rows in the polytunnel instead of three with more space in between those rows to see if the additional space improves the quality and the health of the plants over last year. There's a number of factors to take into consideration when you're choosing your tomato seeds, such as whether you want to grow them inside in a greenhouse or just outdoors in the soil, or you might base your choice on the size of tomatoes. So maybe you want cherry tomatoes, salad tomatoes, or beef tomatoes, depending on what you want to use them for, or even something as simple as the color. You might want traditional red tomatoes, there's yellow ones, pattern ones, or even just plain black ones. Well, I've got a recommendation for my five favorite tomato types based on those different characteristics. And while I'll be growing varieties that we have here in the UK and Europe, I'll do my best to also find some similar varieties that are available in the USA. So let's have a look at those and get started with number five. Hanging basket tomatoes are something that I only really started growing last year. I made a video setting all of that up, which I'll leave a link for in the description. And Along with everything else I was growing last year, we had a massive influx of rats at the allotments and they destroyed absolutely everything. They took bites out of every single tomato that I had to find out if they were even ripe and it was an absolute nightmare. So if you've been looking for updates on that video, you know why there isn't one now. I am going to be redoing those baskets along with the, the fruit and vegetable hanging basket that I made as well in the next couple of weeks so that I can grow it to harvest and make all of those updates, even if they are a, a year late. The variety that I use for my hanging baskets is Cherry Falls, which as the name suggests is a trailing cherry tomato, which makes it the ideal hanging basket tomato. Cherry Falls is a dwarf variety, which keeps it from growing into too big of a plant. It's also a determinate tomato plant, which means that it grows into a bush rather than a long vine. And it also produces all of its tomatoes over a couple of weeks rather than over a season. There are some beneficial traits for growing in baskets because they don't grow too big. They don't grow over the sides and they trail downwards rather than needing staking. And they also require much less maintenance than indeterminate vine varieties. You can just really let them get on with it and not have to be trimming away all of those side shoots and suckers and things. So they are really good in that sense. So if you're a bit pressed for space or maybe you've got a balcony or a porch, you can hang up one of these hanging baskets and still have a great tomato harvest in the summer. I think Cherry Falls seeds are available in the USA, but if you can't find those, you could try Cherry Fountain, which is a variety with similar characteristics. Next up is one of my absolute favorites to grow, and that is beef tomatoes, which are also known as beefsteak tomatoes. Beef tomatoes are one of the largest varieties of tomatoes, and they're generally popular for growing at home. 
They're really great for slicing and sticking on sandwiches or burgers, and there's nothing better than having a barbecue, picking a fat tomato off the plant, and then slicing it straight onto your burger. You don't tend to see them as often in shops anymore, but big supermarkets usually do have them where you can just buy like one at a time rather than in multi-packs. And they're usually quite expensive for uh, one tomato, so they're definitely worth having a crack at if those big burger slices are something that you'd like to try. Some popular varieties that are readily available here and in the USA include Beef Master, Beef Steak and Big Beef. I've got a couple of Beef Steak plants in this year and I've also got the first of my new varieties that I'm going to be trying, which is Super Steak. I can't recommend enough that you try a couple of new varieties every year and compare them to the traditional varieties because every garden's different and in, that's in terms of your soil, your temperature, humidity, all of those important factors that affect plant growth. So different varieties can outperform others and you might just find the perfect tomato for your garden. So it is always worth making space just to try that new variety. Next up is another one that I added to my lineup last year and that's an Italian plum variety called San Mazzano 2. Plum varieties are a type of tomato that have been mostly produced for making sauces and pre-packaging and they're usually the kind that you'll get in a can. They're usually longer and cylindrical in shape rather than your traditional round tomato and they also come with less seed compartments than a standard tomato which makes them more suitable for processing and cooking. The most popular varieties of plum tomato for growing are San Mazzano and Roma which compared San Mazzano tomatoes are thinner and they're more pointed and the flesh is thicker with fewer seeds and they have a taste which is stronger, sweeter and less acidic. The Roma tomato variety is a popular hybrid in the USA and it was developed using the San Mazzano tomato as the genetic base during breeding and they're also readily available here in the UK so they're definitely all worth a try. The San Mazzano 2 tomatoes that I grew in my greenhouse last year were the best looking tomatoes that I've ever grown until the rats had off with all of them. So I really, really hope that they'll have similar results this year. Cherry tomatoes are small round tomatoes that are sort of in between the smaller wild currant tomatoes and the standard size garden tomato. Cherry tomatoes are usually red, but there's also some varieties with yellow, green, orange, or even purple tomatoes growing on them. Cherry tomatoes are a popular choice for growing outdoors or in an unheated greenhouse and every year I grow Gardener's Delight which are slightly larger than a standard cherry tomato and I get absolutely loads of tomatoes per plant and they keep growing and fruiting all the way through summer into autumn. They're really intense and strong flavoured tomatoes and they are the absolute perfect tomatoes to just cut in half and mix in with your salads with a bit of salt and pepper on them. My second trial variety this year is another cherry tomato called Sun Gold, which is apparently a rival for Gardener's Delight in terms of flavour and sweetness. They produce golden orange cherry tomatoes, which I really can't wait to try later this year. Sun Gold tomatoes are available in the USA and they are a similar tomato to Gardener's Delight. If you can't get those wherever you are, there is a similar extra sweet cherry tomato called Sweet Million. And finally, we've got my absolute number one favorite type of tomato, which is the classic English greenhouse variety, Moneymaker. I always use Moneymaker plants for my tomato feeding experiments and all of the fruits are absolutely fantastic from them. The tomatoes are round and smooth and they're usually the variety that you'll find like in a net or in a pack at the supermarket are labelled as salad tomatoes. Tomatoes are best grown in greenhouses in cooler climates and cultivars such as Moneymaker are specifically bred for indoor growing which is where you'll get the best results with those plants. I'm growing my money makers for my main variety this year in the polytunnel as I've got the San Mazzano plants in the greenhouse. And as I mentioned, I am trying to give them a lot more space to grow this year. But do check out my tomato feeding guides and my experiments from the previous years to get a good look at all of these varieties while you're waiting on my next updates for this year. And that's the five varieties plus two new ones that I'll be growing this year. And that'll cover every single use and recipe that I've got for tomatoes. Let me know in the comments which varieties you like to grow and where you are in the world. And let me know if you've tried growing any of these varieties yourself and what you thought of them. I'll see you next time.